open, oh God. Read them on the Sulabalaba. My heart is open, oh God. Da 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 Esha baba ba, embreko te livaranda da ba, little leva la banja la da ba, ay 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 ay, Ebenisa, my help us, ay 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 ay, Ebenisa, Ebenisa oh, ay 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 ay. Ebenezer, my help. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. We are still praying. If you don't pray well, I will not say it. I will just go to the normal message. You need to be able to receive what I want to say. Because if you cannot receive, there is no point saying it. Kingdom things are treasures, so they are valuables. I don't know if you have read in the scripture, the Bible says that the prayers of the saints are stored up in golden vials. Have you heard that before? That's treasure for prayers. <laughs> there are prayers that God do not even hear. There are prayers that God hears, but He doesn't respond. And there are prayers that when God hears them, He stores them in golden vials. <laughs> it's not the same level. So I wanted to pray to God and say, Lord, open my heart to receive from you. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. Open my heart to receive today in the name of Jesus. Open my heart to receive today. Shalende Sulebanda. Erus Kababa Leteve Ledaba. Rescoparatepe Lekupere de Balaba. Rende ko manana vas, ris ke pepe le pere da bala bala ba, eronda da 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 da, ish ke pe le pere te 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 te, e katara da katara da da da. In Jesus' name we are praying. We are still praying. We are still praying. Truth. The Bible says. And you shall know the what? The truth. Then the truth shall what? Make you free. The knowing there is not just about having the truth. Because you can have the truth and still be destroyed by the truth. If you are not guided into the truth. There is what we call guidance into the truth. So the Bible says, Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he said, I will send the Holy Spirit. And he now said, he will, what? he will guide you into what? All truth. A truth you are not guided into cannot make you free. Are you getting it? Do you know God's love is a, is, is a truth, right? But that can be the reason somebody will perpetually live in sin. You know why? He's not guided into that truth. So any truth you are not guided into will not make impact in your life. Are you there? Instead of that truth liberating you, it, can, it may not be the reason you will live in the bandage of sin. You are going to pray to God. Lord, open my heart to receive from you. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a waster. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus, oh God, open my heart. Walk on my heart to receive your word. I don't want to be a waster. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to be a waster. I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus, 
open my heart, O God, to make profit, to make profit, to make profit. In the name of Jesus, open my heart to make profit, O God. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to be a waster of divine resources. Therefore, Lord, open my heart to receive. Open my heart to receive. Open my heart to receive. Open my ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. Open my heart to receive. Open my ears to hear. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can we have our seat? Welcome the closest person to you. Sister Mary, you are welcome. Sister Linda, you are welcome. Welcome some... I'm, I'm doing my own now. You are not doing yours. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now there is something we want to. I'm going to speak on. But before then, while we we're praying, the Lord laid something in my heart, and I want to share it with you. Now I'm going to start with a question. When you get employment, what do you think they pay for? Or how many things do you think they are they, they are paying you for? Many of us, at least we know government workers, right? And at the end of the month. They do what? They collect their salary, right? Now, that salary is for what? Who can help us? Which labor? <laughs> the work. Okay. Praise God. I want you to understand that there are certain principles that we must know. There are, there are certain things that works on earth that does not work in heaven. The first thing is time. Are you getting what I'm saying? In heaven, there is no time. Do you get what I'm saying? God lives in eternity. In eternity, there is no time. Eternity is an age where there is no time. A timeless season. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when God created earth, the, the rule, the principle that was governing earth was time-based. That's why when you gain employment, what they are paying you for is not necessarily your labor, so to say. But what they are paying you for is your time. Because you can labor. Look at, look at. Okay, take for instance. If somebody does decide to start laboring, doing something he's not asked to do, would they pay him? Is it not laboring? So it means that though you may need to labor, are you there? But most importantly, your time is a what? Is a currency. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what now happens when you spend time with God? What happens? That means you are doing something that will definitely attract a what? A reward. Now, what is it that the Lord dropped in my heart while we're praying? Now, the Lord spoke to me while we're praying today, and he said that the major thing that the devil is using to distract the youth is that he is raising up things that can get their attention. Note this. Anything that cannot get your time has not gotten your attention. Are you getting it? The moment something gets your attention, that thing begins to eat up your time. Meanwhile, that is, maybe you don't know, one of the greatest virtues and values, I mean treasures, that God has given to man is time. If you are wasting your time, you are wasting your what? Your life. Because time is what? is life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Lord now said that the major thing the devil is choosing to entice the young ones is things that can get their time. And the strategy is that you will spend your time, your precious time, doing things that are not relevant. The Bible says that the glory of the youth is what? Is in their what? In their strength. Now, I, I was, you know, while we were praying, I had to put on my data to download a particular instrumental. So while I was doing that, I just saw this ad. There's this particular game. I don't know if you have seen it. There, there, are, there are new games now that when you play it, they assure you that they can put money in your account. Have you seen something like that before? Okay. Now, those games, we, are, we entice you. As a matter of fact, while I, I was just trying to download something, but they were playing those things, I could not stop it. I had no choice. I have to flow <laughs> with them. So they now interviewed one rich man. That man now said, yes, yes, we'll pay into your account. Just to show you that the thing is what is legal. 
But I want you to be careful. The aim and the target of the devil in this season is to get our time. Are you there? The moment the devil gets your time, what he will do is that he will commit you to doing things that is not relevant. Meanwhile, the only thing God will reward is relevance. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you can be busy doing something that is not relevant and miss your reward. You, are you getting what I'm saying? You know, it is common for people to say, I don't know, most people like to say things like, I'm busy. You must have heard that before. They like it, they feel like when they say, I'm busy, I'm busy, they, they are being serious. Are you there? They are being serious, they are being... No, being busy does not necessarily mean that you are serious. Because you can be busy doing nothing. Anything you are doing part time that is not the will of God for your life is nothing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So on head, when you come to people and you and you and you approach them and they are saying, "Why are you not doing this?" I say, "I'm busy. I'm busy. Now I've been busy." They don't see you as somebody that is serious. No, the way God judge what we do is not by what you say. Are you there? Is by the, the, the measure of relevance that is attached to that action. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, this is where I'm going. You have to, I just want to create an awareness so that you will not fall into that deception. The devil is bringing up a lot of device, a lot of help these days to get your attention. You will discover that there are things you can be doing online. Are you there? And you'll be getting money. Are you there? You are just... It's not like you are only doing something that looks so real. More or less like a game. You are looking at something. Are you, are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? And money is coming to your account. Do you know what, what, what is paying you? Do you know what they are paying for? Eh? They are paying for your what? Your time. It will, it will get to a time that if, if, you, if, you, if you have seen people that are, you know, have this privilege of traveling abroad, you will know that when you get there, most of them, they, they work with time. So you work in a place for two hours and they pay you. Are you there? That means what they are paying is your what? Is your time. Now this is where I'm going. Because of those things that you are likely to get by devoting your time to such an activity, won't you continue to do it? You will continue. Now, gradually the devil is bringing back what you call addiction. Addiction. You will not know. You will think you are doing the right thing. I'm not saying this because the Lord is bringing it up as a current issue that we need to address. Gradually, the devil is bringing what? Addiction. You will get to that. Suddenly, you will get to that point whereby you cannot go one hour without pressing your phone. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? The moment you reach that point whereby you cannot go an hour without checking your phone, you are already addicted. An addiction to phone is a sign that the devil is eating up your time. Everybody wants to make heaven, but you must understand that what God will measure on the last day to know if you are qualified for heaven is what you have done with your time. Are you get what I'm saying? So we have to be very careful with this subject of time. The devil is after your what? Your time. So, for, for the devil to have your time, what will he try to do? He will try to get your attention. You must note that whatever gets your attention already have what? Your time. Because what you give attention to, you give what to? Your time to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's the strategy of the devil now. Because I'm saying this because if you don't know, you will fall victim of what the devil is doing. And you will think you are still normal. Let's ask ourselves questions. What are we doing with our time? The encounter of Moses was before the burning bush. The Bible says that the fire was on the bush, but the bush was not what? Consumed. So with that supernatural experience, God was able to get what? The attention of what? Of Moses. My question to you is, what is that thing that is getting your attention? Let's be careful. The devil is after our time. What are you doing with your time? I, I found out that Christianity is beyond going to church. Because I've seen many people go to church and yet they fumble. Christianity is simply your personal relationship with the Lord. 
If you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, you are not a Christian. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need to begin to redefine certain things. Because if we don't redefine it, we, we, we hurt ourselves. How many of you, something has happened, it's not really to you directly, but you just discover somebody that you think should be a Christian did something that is unreasonable and it hurt you. It pained you. The reason you felt the pain is because of that place you have placed the person. Have you experienced such things before? It will mean that coming to church alone is not a proof that you are a child of God. You may even have titles and yet you are not a child of God. But a child of God is that one that has a what? A personal what? Relationship with who? So what God wants to point our attention to today, briefly, is time. Please beware of what you give your time to. Are you there? Because the devil is after it. Your time is your life. Your time is your what? So if you are wasting your time, you are wasting away. Do you know why? If you are wasting your time, you are wasting away because a waste of time is a waste of life. Are you there? Someone will say somebody is living a wasted life. It means that that person is wasting his time. Are you getting what I'm saying? So as you are here now and you are seated, trying to learn from the Lord, are you wasting your time? No. But some people can be, they can spend hours doing things that is not relevant. But when you say, come and spend little time with the Lord, it will become boring. How many of you have heard people say things like, ah, if I want to sleep, I know what to do. I will just read the Bible. Once I open it, I will sleep off. Have you heard people say things like that before? Is a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign of a spiritual disease. I don't know the name. I can't say tuberculosis now. <laughs> it's a sign of a spiritual disease. So if we open the Bible and we sleep off, what is that thing that will take away sleep from our hands? Discussion. Right? Talking. Watching movies. Now listen to me. If you... Anytime you discover that you can spend more time on worldly things than on spiritual things, you are carnal. One of the first signs of carnality is that you will, you will, it will be easy for you to spend more time on what? Spiritual things than what? Eh, more time on carnal things than what? Spiritual things. It's a sign that you are carnal. Are you there? Oh, I want to sleep. Oh, don't worry. It's easy. Just bring the Bible. Before I read two verses. <laughs> it's not a testimony. It's not a testimony of a victorious person. It's a testimony of someone that is getting defeated. So I don't know who the Lord is speaking to. What is getting your time? Maybe you are even wasting away. Maybe you are wasting. Do you know somebody can be wasting? You don't know. Okay, let me give you an example. I was on bike one day, maybe two months ago. I was on bike. There's no place where God cannot speak to you. That's why I try as much as possible. If I cannot carry my daughter, I will put a sheet of paper in my pocket. And I'll put a pen there. If I hear anything. <laughs> ah, you may think I'm a madman, but I will write it. Uh, I don't care what you are thinking. I will have, <laughs> have, no. I've written on the road before. Expressway, the meet the, the line like this, eh? that line when you want to cross. I was walking and I was writing there. I was on bike one day, I think maybe about two or three months ago. I was on bike and the Lord began to speak to me. The Lord said, Many people are wasting, but they think they are living. He was just talking, I was just listening to him because I was on bike. I can't write. He now went further, he said. Most of the things that people gather and they call valuables are waste products. I was listening to him. Then he continued. He said, for instance, God now said, he said, anything you gather outside of the will of God is what? It's a waste. Are you there? So a man that continues to do things that is not God's will for his life is what? It's wasting. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is it clear? Anything you gather outside of the will of God is a what? Is a waste. Is it 
And the example the Lord used was, the Lord now said, for instance, I was on bike, all this discussion was on bike. I was not talking, it was just talking. Now said, for, ex- for example, if a prostitute, maybe as, he, as she goes to places, or maybe a thief that steals, that goes to people's shop in the night and just bubble their things. He said, if maybe a prostitute now, get something. Maybe somebody gave the person a car. He went to another customer. I don't know what they call maybe clients, right? Okay. He went to another client. That one gave her maybe 100,000. Maybe he went to another person. That one now said, ah, oh, you are the best. That's okay. I'll, I'll have 10 houses. I'll give you one. The Lord now told me, he said, those houses that the lady has, the car the lady has, the money the lady has in the account, they are all waste products. Because the lady got it by wasting. Are you guys what I'm saying? That you are getting something that is beneficial does not mean you are making impact. You can be wasting and still be getting something. Are you there? You can't judge how fruitful your life is with what you are getting. No. Because a man that is wasting can still be getting some benefits. Are you getting what I'm saying? So all that is gathered in sin, according to God. I was not the one that said it anyway. He was the one saying it. What did you call it? Waste what? Products. You know, sometimes when we are walking on the street, we look at big mansions. We say, ah, I love this house. Have you ever done that before? I've done it many times. I love this house. Maybe that house you desire. It's a waste product. <laughs> I've seen some cars before and say, Jesus, Lord, if you give me this word, I will serve you. Maybe that car you desire is a waste product. Whatever you gather by wasting is waste product. And what is wasting? Wasting is any activity you do apart from the will of God. It's a waste. God wants you to pray at a certain time and he woke you up in the night but you slept off. You, you were awake. Oh. He said, ah, why am I awake? The Lord is saying, pray, pray, pray. He said, I'm tired, I'm tired. And you slept off. What are you doing? You are not sleeping no, at that point. You are what? You are wasting. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So don't desire the treasures of the wicked. Many of us, we have people around us, we know they are ungodly. There are Yahoo boys everywhere. And you see the way they drive their cars, right? They look like they are the one on top of the world. But according to God, what are they doing? They are wasting. And all those things you see them gather, those valuables, they are what? Waste products. I'm telling you this because I really want you to have the right orientation. Right orientation for life. That somebody is making profit does not mean is making impact. Are you there? A person that is wasting can still be getting what? Something. That's my emphasis. See, the devil has, has deceived some people to make them believe that once I can, ah, this thing is giving me something. So because it's giving me something now, I'm what? I'm making impact. No. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your time is, see, the first gift God gives to man after the gift of life is the gift of time. Are you getting it? The, after the gift of, the first gift God gave us is the gift of life. So we, by the gift of life, we became alive. After the gift of life, the second gift God gave humanity is the gift of time. Let me, let me link the two. You see, the gift of time and the gift of life, they work together. The gift of life is what defines your being alive. So for the fact that every one of us could be seated here, it means that we have the gift of what? Of life. The biological life, which is responsible for making us breathe in, breathe out. Are you there? Now, 
the gift of life makes you alive. But the gift of time defines your impact on it. So if you don't know how to use your time wisely, you will just live and not make impact. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's nobody here that is too small to make impact. If I ask you now, how many people can point to you and say, because of Sister Celestina, I was able to do this. Everybody should have those kind of people. Okay, let me, let me show you something. What will determine if a person will be successful or not is what? Is how well you can use what? The gift of, of time. See, the gift of life only makes you alive. So you can be alive and be in poverty. Are you there? You can be alive and be a sinner. Are you there? You can be alive and be out of God's will for your life. But for you to be great... See, another thing to notice this. <laughs> you know, sometimes when they want to lure you into receiving Jesus, they will say a lot of sweet things. Collect. <laughs> Is it collect Jesus or receive Jesus? Say receive Jesus. Once you receive Jesus, everything we change. You have heard something like that before. It's not true. Jesus can change everything, but there are principles to change everything. For instance, what defines a rich man and a poor man is not about Christianity. Because you can be a Christian and be poor, and you can have somebody that is not even following God and is very rich. Are you there? The secret is what you can do with the gift of time. While you are sleeping in the night, there are people that are reasoning. I'm not saying thinking of how to do people. I'm talking about thinking of how to do things that can fetch them money. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So if you don't know how to use your time wisely, you may not meet up with prosperity. Are you there? Now, take for instance, somebody is going to work every morning and you are just there sitting at home. What will happen to you? In no time, what will come upon you? Poverty. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I think I need to round off this at this point. Let us understand that our time is an asset. Are you there? Your time is your what? Is your asset. It's a valuable asset that God has given to you. Use it rightly. What do I say? Use it what? Use it rightly. Use it rightly. It's very important. Another thing you must notice is this. Every time you spend in the presence of God is not a waste. Are you there? A time spent in God's presence is what? It's not a waste. Do you know why? You see... Anytime you come before the Lord, you mingle with the Lord. You what? You mingle with Him. Anytime you come before the Lord, there is something, there's a really there's a fellowship between the two of you. Suddenly you are going back home with a change orientation. You start seeing things in, in a different way. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? It's a sign that you have mingled with who? With the Lord. You cannot meet with God and hide it. It's not possible. I don't know what I'm saying. You can what? You can't meet with God and hide it. It's not possible. It will definitely show. People will see that this one is following God. So to wrap it up, please let's be careful of what we do with what? Our time. Make sure that what is getting your attention is something that worth it. The moment you are giving your attention to things that are not relevant, you are what? Waste. May the Lord help us. In the name of Jesus. I will bless the name of the Lord and say, Father, we bless you. Jesus, we thank you. We adore you. Let your name be exalted. In the name of Jesus, let your name be exalted. We bless you. Oh, oh. We we'll bless you, Jesus. We we'll bless you, Jesus. We we'll bless you, Jesus. We we'll bless you.